This is the Balanced Growth Show with Dr. Travis Perry, helping successful business professionals like you achieve balance in their lives. Welcome to another episode of the Balanced Growth Show. I'm your host, Dr. Travis Perry, and today we have with us joining in studio virtually, Dan Goldberg. Dan is just a fantastic human being, and I love his story, and I'm going to let him get to that in a second, but he's a professional speaker, and he's the host of the Bits of Gold podcast, and he's a serial entrepreneur. The story of Danny's path to personal and professional intentional living empowers audiences to take ownership of their life and start pursuing a life of greater fulfillment and happiness. Danny's ability to connect with his audience is largely due to a series of unfortunate events. By 25, he lost both his parents to rare cancers, and it changed how he lived forever. Getting to know Dan in the you know the pre-show really has been um, a treat. So welcome, Danny, to the show. Travis, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Absolutely. You know, do I call you Dan? Do I call you Danny? <laughs> what, what do you suggest? Um, you can you can go by Danny. Awesome, awesome. So you know, as as we were talking, you know, I, I really connected with your story about you losing your parents. But catch us up. Tell us how did you get to the place you are now as a keynote speaker, um, professionally? But how how that you know took its turns with your parents. Yeah, absolutely. So when I was 14 years old, I was on a family vacation with my dad, uh, with, my, with my family, and I was sitting in the hot tub with my dad. And I turned to him and I said, hey, dad, how do I build something great in life? My dad was an industrial designer. He loved to build and design things. And he turned to me and he said, find what you love and you will build something amazing. And at that time, I was working in a boxing gym. I loved boxing growing up. And I said, I love, I love boxing. That is that's it. I love boxing. I want to do something in the boxing space. And within 15 minutes of hanging out in that hot tub, we decided let's import some boxing gloves from Thailand and sell it here in the States. And that's what we did. And at 14 years old, I started my first, my first business. And um, literally like when we, when we got home from that trip, I had a business name, um, a, a plan in place that I wrote up as, as well as I could as a 14 year old. And a couple months later, uh, Boxes and boxes of boxing equipment showed up at my garage. And on weekends, my parents would drive me around all over Long Island and New York to sell boxing gloves. And the business ended up growing uh, quite quite well. And um, I ended up slowly growing that. And through, through the business, I traveled literally like all over the world. I went to the manufacturers in Thailand, in the States. I went to shows in Vegas, gyms in California. Florida, you name it. Like we were, we were traveling as the rise of the UFC was was coming about, hmm. and um, I lived like I truly lived my wildest childhood dreams, and I loved the business. I made equipment for my favorite boxers, world champion fighters. You know, to me at the time, that was like me meeting LeBron James. Only I'm giving the fighter his his pair of boxing gloves that he was going to go and train in. So it was an incredible experience. And when I was 20 years old, uh, my dad was was diagnosed with cancer and died about seven months later. And after he died, um, so much of what pulled me out of bed in the morning when I was pursuing this boxing glove business was just the the love of it. I I was so excited by what I was building and the impact I was having. And I had grandiose ambitions as it relates to building that business. And after he died, I really redefined what success was in my own life. And I said, you know, if I can make more money, not it's not about doing what I love. It's about making more money. And if I could do that, um, I will ultimately regain a sense of happiness. I'll be able to help take care of my mom. Um, and I ended up selling my company when I was 20, when I was 21 and started a new business, um, started a new agency helping consumer brands make products overseas. And mm-hmm. I thought that I was on this a better path now because I was on this path of um, I can do this, I can make more money, and uh, my hypothesis was was right. And I ended up quickly building a way better business than my previous business in terms of dollars and cents. Um, Quickly built up this business, um, and only a couple years into it, I realized, hey, I'm not, I'm not so happy in this business. Actually, it it isn't the the excitement that I had when I was running around as a 14 year old selling boxing gloves to my favorite fighters and. Um, I knew I wasn't so happy, but something 
kept me there. Often, whenever I tell friends, family, hey, I want to leave this business, they'd say, dude, are you crazy? You're living the dream. Like the business worked. I had, a, I had an office overseas. We had employees. We had a solid book of customers. Um, my best friends would say, hey, like I would trade anything to be in your shoes. So as a result of that, I just stayed, I stayed put in the business and I said, you know, um, someday I'm going to leave the business. Someday I'm going to sell this business and then I'll start to do the work that I really want to do. Then when I was 25, my, my mom passed away unexpectedly after two months, uh, after a two month fight with cancer. And it was really after she died that I took a step backwards and, um, really started to ask myself, is this really the work that I want to do? Um, is this really the life I want to live? And I realized it wasn't, but I still really had this internal battle of, I want to leave. I can't leave. I want to leave. I can't leave. I want to leave. I can't leave. And ultimately, um, it wasn't until up till four years after my mom died that I finally mustered the strength and the courage to um, exit my business and start to pursue the work that I'm now working towards, which is uh, being a full-time professional speaker uh, to, to ultimately help impact other people to have their own moment of awakening of uh, realizing you know that their time, their life is 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 limited, and asking themselves how and where they want to spend their limited time. So that's the work that I'm striving towards now. But um, yes, that's that's a little bit of my story and how we got here today. Nice, I appreciate you sharing that. And you know, I, I was 26 when my father passed away, and it really did shape the rest of my. It, it changed everything that I was working towards. But I, I felt like everything that I had done before then was building. And I see the same thing with you, like you were building this, you were growing and these great changes in your life that have happened, not so great, meaning awesome, but huge changes that happened to you have obviously set you on a different path. Um, you know, when you talk about highest priorities, I just equate that to balance, you know? And so, you know, it makes sense. You're, you're living the dream. You're trying to reprioritize things and that's obviously goes without saying important, but why is taking this new direction going to help you have better balance to, you know, as a keynote speaker going from, Hey, I sold my business to speaking now. Why is that going to align these priorities better for you? Or maybe it's not so much why, but how, how will that align your priorities better in your life? Yeah, I think you know so much of my previous business. Um, so I ran an agency the last eight years, helping companies with their supply chain overseas. And it's not to say there weren't interesting elements of the business or things that I enjoyed within the business, but so much of the business stemmed from um, just making money. You know, like it was like, how do we find the best factory that will allow us to have the greatest margin? There was no, there was no. There was no greater sense to it than just purely like business for what business is, right? At face value. And that's that that couldn't be further from alignment with what is actually important to me and my values, which is, you know, I could sit here and talk to you for the next day or two about how do I align my life to um, more, even more in line with how and where I want to spend my limited time. Um, so that, so, so for me, the, the thing that really is attracting me or pulling me towards speaking is this, the ability to share my story, share the lessons I learned as a result of the loss of my parents to help other people harness their limited time. Um, and that is so much more in line and aligned with the work that I want to be doing as opposed to purely a business for business sake to um, you know, just, just make money, which was really, at the end of the day, what my business was. Yeah, no, well said. You don't you don't get time back. Time is finite and limited. And you're exactly right. I mean, it's it's important. That's what's what balance. That's why people want balance, is they want the time in their life to do the things that are most important. So I appreciate that. As uh, you know, let's look at back at the the business that you have built uh, before speaking. What was it? You know, you had this passion. That uh, you know was boxing gloves. How were you able to scale that business 
um, while keeping your balance at the same time? Or was there balance during that business? <laughs> or did you, talk to us a little bit about that experience. Yeah. So, um, so my box school of business, I started when I was in high school. And I would say absolutely there was no balance. Um, perhaps some of it stemmed from just like excitement and youthful excitement and innocence. Um, I remember when when I was first starting the business, there was no, there wasn't Shopify, there weren't three PLs. So the landscape was totally different. Um, I had to have the website like custom built. And when I would get orders in the middle of the night, I was I was 15 years old and I would get an order and I would I would wake up. If I had to wake up to go to the bathroom at 3 a.m. As a 15 year old, I was waking up, checking my phone, and saying, "Oh my god, you know, I got an order. This is the the coolest, most exciting thing in the world." So um, there was there was a lot of energy uh, that I was very hard to contain or put, put put forth. Like all my energy was full. Like I I am I was obsessed. Um, even when I was in school, I was thinking about the business, and it, it continued throughout college. I would say I started to become a lot more balanced after my dad died. When my dad died, I really looked introspectively and said, it was the first time I asked myself, how and where do I want to spend my limited time? And there is more to life than just business. And that was the first time where I started to incorporate the other areas of my life. It, it actually wasn't until after my dad died where I, where I sat down and I looked at the 10 key areas of my life. Um, so, you know, myself, my body, uh, career, business, friends, family, adventure, looking at all these different areas and saying, how do I want to spend my time in each of those buckets and getting hyper intentional? So that's when, it, that's when my life really started to change for the better. I'm hearing myself in this interview today, which is really, you know, very, very surreal. That's exactly what, what I did is I went home after writing my father's obituary and looked at the same you know areas of life and decided you know where am i going to spend my time how how am i going to do this well and you know this this really uh, is is crazy to hear about but it's so exciting at the same time to find someone who had very similar experience losing loved ones so quick but you're able to start making those changes now in speaking being able to share your message help people you know better use the time that they have what do you think your biggest struggle is as you're moving forward to scale that business, to grow it, to market it, to you know build this foundation? I know we talked a little bit in the pre-show about this, uh, you know, on the, on the the speaker side, but how you know what's your biggest struggle there while trying to not lose the balance that you have now? Yeah, I think so. I, I just want to acknowledge also it's it's fascinating how you know sometimes the most painful moments such as loss can can have such a profound impact in the way you view the world and uh, a catalyst for um, perhaps change that you bring forward in your own life and it sounds like we had a very similar experience there um, specifically regarding balance I, I think it is incredibly difficult to bring balance in your life when you are starting something brand new and you want to excel, you want to be great at it. Um, it is very hard to hold the same space that you're holding for all the different areas. At least that has been my own experience. I think something that I try to, to bring into my life is just the intention. So, um, you know, perhaps I'm going to be a little bit, uh, let's say off balance where I'm going to be a little bit obsessive and a little bit spend a little bit more time than I was before in terms of getting this business off the ground and the 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 intensity that I'm going to put forth to bring to make this to make this vision a reality. Um, but I just try to still be very hyper intentional in how and where I'm spending my time in the other areas. So um, just as an example, um, maybe you know I say before it's very important that I make space and time to be present with my wife or be present with my family when I'm with them or be present with my friends and do a trip with them, something something to that effect. Um, but maybe now I'm going to, instead of instead of going on three dates a week or two dates a week, I'm going to go on one date a week. So I think the intentionality is how you bring balance forward as you're in the pursuit of something new, um, but not losing complete 
sight of the hard work that I've done up until this point to bring balance into those other key areas. Yeah, I like to talk about times and seasons, and it maybe there's a season of your life where health is super important to you, and so that may take a higher priority uh, than maybe normal, or there may be a time period where you're a little bit out of balance uh, business wise because you're launching something. the The understanding there is is very much a realistic, you know, look on life. Right. If we were just high in the sky, yeah, you know, again, balance isn't equilibrium throughout all 10 areas, but it is, you know, live in the highest areas of your life intentionally. Um, and I just did a podcast, you know, that we released the other day with JM Ryerson. We talk all about intention. And that seems to be a lot of what we're talking about today as well. It's just this, you know, where are your intentions? Being present. Um, it's not so much a, a time thing all, you know, every single day, every week, but it is, you know, a little bit of, okay, I've got to spend some extra time here and some extra time there being flexible. I had a coach who said, you have to be careful because if we're too flexible, no one is going to trust us. No one will mm-hmm. believe you. You're all over the place. Oh yeah, I'll be there, but you don't show up. Over time, your friends know that you're just a flake. Right. Yeah. In business, like you're going to ghost people and they're going to red list you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but if, if you are such a hard nose that no, like no exception, nothing will get in the way. Um, and you're so rigid that you can't ever reschedule anything, you're going to fall apart. And I've seen the extremes to both rigidity. And flexibility. And I had a coach who said, you know, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, you know, be firm like rock and be or solid like a rock and be as flexible as water. I'm like, what? What does that mean? Like, <laughs> well, you know, for me, it's kind of that 80 20 principle, the Pareto principle of no, 80%, 90% of the time, I'm going to be solid on exactly what it is I'm trying to do. But there's 10 or 20% where my energy just wasn't in it yesterday. I went home early. I was like, you know what? Forget it. I don't care about this priority, this part. I pushed that off till next week because I had some personal things going on that just took much higher priority and my my mind just wasn't in it. I think that is okay. Rescheduling, okay. But again, if you're too flexible or you're too rigid, it's not going to work out so great overall. So I that that's a little bit about my philosophy. I'd love to know what how does you know your philosophy when it comes to being able to say, you know, when I can become a little obsessive, when um I it's okay to be out of balance for a little bit of time. What is it that that might allow you to not get sucked in to never having balance again, but pulling you back? Like talk to us a little bit about some things that might help you there. Yeah. I don't, so I don't think there's necessarily, I think it's so deeply personal. Um, you know, what, what might be balanced for one person might look completely off balance for another person. So I think the, the intention and the, the value system that you've created of what is important to you um, is so critically important to understand, to determine, you know, when it's okay to be a little bit off balance or not balanced. Um, I think one thing that like is incredibly valuable that uh, I would I would recommend to people is just trying to understand what success looks like in your life holistically and in each of the key categories. So you know if you're looking at your your health and your business and your career, uh, friends, family, like looking at each of the buckets and saying what is success in each of those and trying to align your choices so they're in line with pushing you or pulling you towards that. And then uh, really looking at, you know, making decisions. So you're in line with your own value system, because, you know, for, for 20 year old me would have said at that time, like I thought, Hey, this, this business thing is all I really want to make happen. And for me, probably at the time it was okay to be a little bit more off balance um, in someone else's eyes. But for me, that was really like on balance. So I think it is a deeply personal thing. And I, I like how you said it's kind of like the seasons and at different points, 
some things are kind of tuned higher than others, but I think it does fluctuate at different points in your life and depending on where you're at in your life. Yeah. Uh, 100%. Values, everybody's going to have different values, different definition of what success is and what that means to them. So I really appreciate you bringing up that point. Um, what do you see as some of the biggest issues for other entrepreneurs? Uh, you know, you speak for audiences all over the country. What have you come to see as some of their biggest issues? You know, you've, you've, you've grown and sold a successful business. You've seen it in your own personal life. And I'm sure you've had colleagues, friends, and others um, that just don't feel like they're able to grow and keep a great sense of balance. What, what are some of those issues that you may have been able to see? Yeah, I think, I, think it's tough. I think it's tough when you're in the pursuit as an entrepreneur, when you're really in the weeds to bring balance into the other areas of your life. Um, I, think, I think if you're... You know, I think you need to make the space as you're like maybe even before you start building a business for hey these are the these are the places where i need to make the time for i need to be intentional about holding the space um and if you don't it's it's very easy to get lost in the weeds of your business and your career at least that's been my own experience as well and um from what i've seen in uh friends who are entrepreneurs it is so easy to get lost in the uh you know, the ambitious goals and the dreams that you have as it relates to your business. And, oh, if I just continue to work at this thing, it will become this other thing that's so great. So, you know, it's like, it's it's so it's so important to understand how to incorporate the things that are important in your life outside of just your career to ultimately live a happier life. I, I have a really good friend. Um, he's since made some really big changes in his life, but for years he was building, he was building a, um, a, a venture fund and for years, he had he had this this grand ambition of oh, when when we sell when we sell this company when we sell that company, I will then have X dollars in the bank and I will be able to go and do all these things I really want to do. And this guy loved to surf. And some days he'd call me and he'd be like, "Oh, the waves are so sick! I just want to go surfing." And I'm like, "Dude, so go surfing." He'd be like, "No, I can't. I can't. I have this meeting, that meeting, this meeting, that meeting." And um, you know, eventually I told him, "Listen, like." You are hurting your own mental health by not incorporating surfing into your life. And if you make the space and the time for it, I bet you your career, your business, and all the other areas of your life will, as a result, be better. Like you need to learn that you can actually leave your business for a couple hours, a couple, even a couple of days, and it will, it will all be good. The end result is still probably going to be the exact same thing. And, um, you know, I, I, I made it very clear to him why don't you just block off? Once a month on a Tuesday from eight to twelve, do not disturb. You're going surfing, and obviously, like you know, we're we're in New York, so you need a you need a time you need to follow the 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 schedule of the ocean and when there's waves. But um, you know, he did that, and he was so much happier in his life. And it was you know blocking four hours out of the entire month for something that brought him a lot of happiness. So I think it is really powerful if you can do that. But I think it's really really hard to just start doing that. Um, like out of nowhere, you know, it's like, it's much easier if you already have a, a practice of some sort where you're already thinking about those things. I'm, sh- I'm sure you see it in your own work. Um, a lot of people are probably really out of balance and it's really hard to make that change when you're in the weeds. Yeah, it is. It, it, I've studied behavioral change for, you know, a lifetime. And that's the problem is if we don't set limits, we don't set boundaries for ourselves it's easier to not know when to check ourselves. So your friend who's struggling because he really wants some fun and rec time, and maybe it is, you know, exercise, you know, what a physical health as well. But what, you know, for, for you, you got kind of identified as it's mental health, right? Yeah. He needed that time. He needed to be out surfing. And, and I'm a surfer stuck in the mountain West going any <laughs> chance I get when we go on vacation, it's like, Where's the waves? You know, <laughs> where where can I rent a board? Like that's the first thing I look for after we have the Airbnb scheduled. Is what are the waves like? Mm-hmm. And I understand um, so much that that is is crucial. When I'm quite honestly, when I'm having a bad day or I, I'm kind of in a funk, I go mountain biking because I know that's that's my thing. I can at least get the to the mountains here. 
and I go mountain biking and that that's my go-to. That's my mental health, you know, change or music or, you know, so it's, it's good to know what it is that can help bring you back when you're stuck. Yeah. Um, I, I really appreciate that. How about for you, for you personally, what is it that like, Oh, I'm getting not, not just like a funk, not, not just a bad mood. Like I was talking about, but if you find yourself getting out of a good sense of balance for you, what is a checkpoint that, that you're able to say, yeah, I need to do this to get back in. I think, so I think more on a daily basis, like just a good sweat, a good workout. Um, definitely like it makes me feel so much better. And I've, I've worked out basically my entire life, like some 10 years old. So for me, that's, that's really important. I try, I try really hard to stack the deck. And what I mean by that is like, I used to have this thing where I'd call it the daily vitamins, where these were the non-negotiables that I was doing on a daily basis. So it was wake up. I had a little gratitude practice. Um, I'm not doing that as much anymore, but I had a little gratitude practice. I was going to the gym every single morning. Um, right now I'm being a little bit more flexible with my schedule and um, when I work out and things like that. But the the workout for me is like a really easy way to change my state and to put myself in, uh, to, to get away from maybe the, if I'm feeling bogged down or overwhelmed or stressed or something like that. I think, I think having that valve though, and knowing that you can dial that up or back is, is what's really important. Yeah. It's cool. Well, I highly recommend it. And I, I love that you bring it up. Like, well, of course it's going to be boxing. <laughs> of course <laughs> it's going to be something that you're, you're involved in and that you, you love to do. And we've got to have those things. We've got to have those release valves um, in our lives. And it's cool that we're talking about this right now. What advice would you give to other entrepreneurs out there who are struggling with really making the time matter, uh, having that definition of fulfillment and happiness that's you know really important that you've been a, that you've been able to discover in your life? What what, what advice would you give them? I. I think, you know, I think the thing that's fascinating about entrepreneurs is that you have so much tied to this dream, this ambition, and it's very easy. It is so easy to get lost in that. And I see that now in my new pursuit of speaking, like it is easy to forget about the other areas of your life that are so critically important that are, um, you know, different, maybe they bring you a different sense of fulfillment and joy, but um, you cannot lose sight of that. The thing that probably keeps me the most in sync or in in check with myself to make sure that I'm putting the attention I need in the other areas is probably my my own mortality. I uh, just before this, um, I was with a buddy and um, he's trying to figure some things out, and he asked me what 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 do I do? What do I do to help me? And s- similar question, you know, I told him I I do this thing where I get really honest with myself, where I where I. You know, every couple of months I say, if I were to die in 10 years from now, what would I do differently? What fears would I kick to the curb? How and where would I spend my time? And is it in line with how I'm spending my time today? And it's kind of like just a little check with myself to see if how and where I would spend my time is in line with with how I'm with with I'm just gonna let that pass. Um so you know, I spend I, I spend some time looking inwards and saying, if I had that that wand to see into the future, am I being honest with myself and in, in spending the time that I want in all the areas of my life? And um, if I wanted to get even more granular, I say, okay, if I had five years left, are my answers still the same? And if I wanted to get even one level deeper, I say, if I had one year left. Are my answers still the same? And you know, one year is obviously very, very granular, but um, there are certain things. And um, you know, I use the phone just as, as an example. Like if I if I had one year left to live, there are so many probably times throughout the day or week where the phone would be so far removed from the uh, the environment that I'm in to just be fully present in wherever I am, whether it be a meal with a friend or uh, the work that I'm pursuing. So I try to use that as my kind of like as a gut check. And I think that there there really is a lot to be gained from looking inwards and just evaluating our own time because you know we we don't know how much time we have uh, we have we have while we're here. Yeah, that's it. I love it. 
Well, there, there's so many gold nuggets here today that I just couldn't agree with more. It's interesting how our paths get so different have led to very similar discoveries. And I just really appreciate you being on the show and being willing to share your message because I know it hits home with me and uh, likely a lot of our audience members are feeling the same way and, and appreciate your advice. Uh, if somebody wants to hire you to come speak for their group, for their event, uh, where, where should they go? How can they reach you? They can reach me on LinkedIn at Danny Goldberg or um, at dannygoldbergspeaks.com. Awesome. dannygoldbergspeaks.com. Connect on LinkedIn with Danny Goldberg. Thank you for being such a great guest and really appreciate your message, my friend. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. And if you love this, please like, share, subscribe, do all the things to help grow this message audience. And thank you for your listenership, for being here and for being a fly on the wall on our conversation today. Until next time, remember, live life on purpose. Mm -hmm.